Hello everybody, let us look at interrupts and how the MCU boot. Interrupts are signals that temporarily pause the normal execution of a program, diverting the CPU to execute a specific function called interrupt service routine or interrupt handler. They allow the microcontroller to respond to events that require immediate attention, such as hardware triggers. If you look at the diagram that we have here, there is a button. When the button is pressed, the person pressing the button is expecting the CPU to execute something, right? So during hardware triggers or even software generated events, interrupts play a crucial role in ensuring responsive system behavior, especially in embedded systems. In this diagram, we have CPU here representing our microcontroller unit. Inside the microcontroller unit, it has a program counter. The program counter is responsible for moving to specific instruction to be executed. Now, when this button is pressed, the corresponding interrupt service handler from the vector table is loaded and executed. So a vector table is nothing but a structure that contains interrupt handlers. So you can see them as addresses to specific interrupt routines that we need to be executed. The MCU boot process and the vector table are very simple. When an ARM microcontroller powers on, and typically most microcontrollers, it reads a structure called the vector table located at the beginning of the flash memory. When we look at the CPU, we said that the CPU contains flash and RAM and other stuff. This table holds 32-bit addresses that corresponds to interrupt handlers. One, two, three, four. They are 32-bit addresses. Why? Because we are dealing with a 32-bit architecture. Now, the vector table begins with 16 standard entries defined by ARM. And this is common across all ARM-based microcontroller units. These entries handle core exceptions like reset, fault handling, and system interrupts. The remaining entries are specific to the microcontroller and correspond to peripheral interrupts, such as timers, communication interfaces, and GPIO interrupts, right? So let's say if you get Atmega or you get STM32, all these are built on ARM, but they support different peripherals. Some might have five GPIO instances, some have three UART instances, yes, but across all ARM MCUs, there are 16 standards. STM 32F429, it has 91 peripheral interrupt handlers in addition to the 16 ARM standard entries. Each entry in the vector table points to a function that is executed when corresponding interrupt occurs. All these interrupts, they are addresses that are pointing to a function that needs to be executed. However, the first two entries are very essential to the boot process. So in respect to our diagram, it will be interrupt service routine one and interrupt service routine two. The first interrupt service routine that is placed on top of the vector table is the initial stack pointer. This defines the address that initializes the stack pointer. And the second interrupt service routine is the reset handler. This one contains the address of the firmware entry point, the function executed when the MCU boots or reset. So we have to be careful here. To ensure correct operation, the firmware must correctly populate these entries, particularly the second entry. What is the second entry? We said the second entry is supposed to be a reset handler. It needs to be there as the microcontroller jumps to this address to begin execution during the boot process. We are going to write firmware that will load all these interrupt service routine into their proper place in the flash. I want you to go back to your VS code. We will start with a reset function. Now inside here, infinite loop. The next function I will write will be point the stack. This will be defined from the linker script. We will create this file later. The next, we will define the 16 standard and the 91 specific interrupt service routine handlers. I'll call session inside the session vectors contains 16 plus 91 so inside this we call the e stack and the reset function that we created above okay so this is constant make it s 
This code snippet represents the minimal startup code for an STM32 microcontroller. It defines the initial entry point of the program and it set up the interrupt vector table, as you can see something here, vector. The reset function, inside here, naked and no return, they are keywords from the GCC compiler. It specifies that this function does not return and does not use the usual function prolog epilog. Inside this reset function is an infinite loop. It prevents the program from continuing execution as no actual initialization or logic is present yet. We've not done that. When we go to the next code fragment, it declares the external symbol e stack, which is defined in the linker script. We are going to write a linker script soon and we will define that. Now, this typically points to the top of the stack memory. The next code fragment which you can guess it is creating a session in the memory and calling it what vectors it places the table in a special memory session called vectors what table the vector table as we already discussed the tab is an array of function pointers that represents the interrupt vector table. The first 16 are standard. The rest depends on the MCU that you are using. Inside here, we are calling the e stack and the reset. It means that the first entry e stack, it defines the initial stack point address. The second entry reset, it specifies the reset handler, the function executed when the microcontroller boots or reset. There will be other entries, okay, but the remaining entries can be filled with pointers to standard exception handlers and STM specific interrupt service routines. This forms the foundation for initializing the system that we are building right now. I hope you guys are ready because in the next video, we are going to write the linker script. We are going deep as we can, very low level. If you are afraid, maybe this is the point that you stop. If you are brave, why not? Come with me.